The internet is full of creepy and disturbing finds. Tonight, we're going to once again dive into five unsettling things that I've recently discovered. Enjoy. What's good? How your day going? How's your morning, your evening, your night, whenever you're watching this video? I'll to check out some next boat, Disturbing Things from Around the Internet, Volume 2. Hey, this video is only 13 minutes long and there's five freaking clips in here. I guarantee you these are about to be crazy AF. But hey, either way it go, if you want to check out the original video, the link will be in the description below. But let's go. Welcome back to disturbing things from around the internet. If you recall, this is my one-stop shop for bite-sized creepy finds that I've recently stumbled upon. Just last month, we covered a wide array of disturbing things, ranging from Facebook posts to Reddit conspiracies. Today will be no different. It's time to dive into five more hand-picked and disturbing things from the internet. JB Barsters. Back in 2010, there existed a Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan forum called the Bloody Board. It seemed to have been thriving for quite a few years, with posts dating way back to 2004. Jamie Marsters, a play on the name James Marsters, an actor on the show, ran this forum that contained over 40,000 posts. Everything seems fine here, right? Well... The scope of things takes a pretty big 180 when you realize that the forum had only one active member, Jamie Marsters herself. Each of these conversations were simply her talking to herself, and the topics ran- 53 replies? Each of these conversations were simply her talking to herself, and the topics ranged anywhere from fan meetups to the show's schedule. The peculiar thing about this is the math that comes with it. To keep up with the number of topics that were found on the forum, Jamie would have to have posted once every 84 minutes, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, for 6 years, no. alone. No matter her motive, it's just a little strange. Theories have been thrown up that Jamie is a crazy superfan, and others believe that this entire thing was run by a bot. This actually leads to my next point. Unfortunately, in October of 2010, an article called The 7 Most Unintentionally Creepy Places on the Internet was posted by the website Cracked, and as you might have guessed, this board was on that list. What ensued afterwards was an endless barrage of people storming the board, posting vulgarities, pornography, and other unrelated, undesirable content. It's estimated that a total of 36,753 people flooded the place in the short span of 24 hours. After logging in and being surprised with the endless barrage of posts, Jamie ended up shutting down the board, casting it into Damn. internet oblivion. It turns out that Jamie had used this forum as a sort of news hub for the show so she could keep up with articles about meetups and conventions. The thing is, uh... how big of a fan do you really have to be to make 40,000 posts to yourself. That was wild, but hey, I ain't mad at her. She wasn't hurting anyone. It was just a crazy fan who wanted to keep up with something that they love. But then once the site, let me uh, go back real quick, started getting flooded with what looked like some trolls, maybe some people really on some crazy-ish. Then it started getting wild. This thread is now fur furry. You laugh, you lose. Avatar is the greatest movie. Clearly a damn troll at that point, dog. A visitor. In July of last year, a Facebook post was made by a user named Kiana, who claimed to have had weird things happen to her for a while. She claims that about three years ago, I took this photo and realized that there was a face in the background. People said that it was my younger sibling or someone else at home and it wasn't. Even if it was, I was using front-facing flash and dark-skinned people like me and my brother don't show up in the dark when using front-facing flash. Anyway. People thought it was a lie, and it never was. Little things happened here and there, like my lights shutting off when I knew I had them on, or things moving right in front of my eyes. 
I try to ignore them, but tonight, I just so happened to be recording what I thought was a cute video of me petting my cat, and then you see my cat jump. The photo in question is this. If you're unable to see what she's talking about in the circle, I've done some enhancing for you. Now, without the enhancing though, it doesn't even look like anyone. Honestly, it just looked like it was a, something in the background and just so happened to kind of resemble a face a little bit. You know how sometimes you can look at something on your wall and you be like, damn, low key, if I'm looking at these little spots right here, like I see a face almost. And then, of course, if someone's taking a picture in the dark, someone from long range viewing that picture, like, oh shit, that's a face behind you. If they see that same thing you see, I don't know though, but I, just without it, it doesn't look like anything. Circle, I've done some enhancing for you. With the now, enhancing it up, for the with the enhancing it does. Now, for the video. Oh shit! Whatever you make of this is up to you. It's not an aircraft. In 1978, an Australian pilot named Fred Valentich was flying over the Bass Strait in Australia and ended up disappearing under mysterious circumstances. To give some quick background, Fred held a class 4 instrument rating with over 150 hours of flight time. He was also known as a pretty big UFO enthusiast. He embarked on a nighttime training flight over a 125 mile span of the Bass Strait on October 21st, 1978. Midway through his flight, he contacted air traffic control about an aircraft that was accompanying him. He claimed that the craft was flying at about 1000 feet above him and seemed to be taunting him. The disturbing part is, his last words from the transmission were, it's not an aircraft. A recreation of the flight transcript has been made, and is as follows. This is Delta Sierra Juliet. Is there any known traffic below 5,000 feet? No known traffic. Seems to be a large aircraft below 5,000 feet. What type of aircraft is it? I cannot confirm. It's bright, seems to me like landing lights. Can you describe the uh, the aircraft? As it's flying past, it's a long shape. I cannot identify it. It has such speed. It's before me right now, Melbourne. How large would the um, the object be? Seems like it's stationary. What it's doing right now is orbiting. The thing is just orbiting on top of me. It's also got a green light and a sort of metallic-like... It's shiny on the outside. It's just vanished. That strange aircraft's hovering on top of me again. It's hovering and it's not an aircraft. It's kind of creepy with everything going on right now because now it really got me thinking, yo, it could be far-fetched, you can say what you want, but it does have me thinking, what if aliens are really here or really starting to come to this mug or really starting to show but even if they do somehow make contact with us i'd be more impressed that they figured out a way if they actually come from another planet that they figure out how to get here and make it here and somehow try to communicate with us i mean shit let's not kill him let's figure out some shit i and the only thing i can't do about this case is wonder if he really saw something up there or if he was lying i wonder if he really saw something though <laughs> It's hovering, and it's not an aircraft. Many theories have been made regarding what he was actually seeing. 
These theories range from an actual UFO sighting to the possibility of Fred becoming disoriented and flying upside down. The latter seems very possible given the fact that this occurred at nighttime. He could have very well been looking up at his own lights as they were reflected in the ocean. The Damn. one thing that unnerves me about this though is the fact that he made claims about it flying in front and behind him and also that the lights he saw were green when his craft had no green lights at all. The entire incident is intriguing as all hell and a solid explanation is yet to be given. In 2014, model and fashion designer Lorraine Scott was found dead in her New York apartment. She died by hanging herself with an improvised satin noose. While this death is tragic, the incidents that followed were nothing short of chilling. Lorraine was known for scheduling Facebook posts and tweets for her audience. After her confirmed death, her accounts were still sending out updates and her PR team did little to stop it before any sort of backlash. The strangest part about this story lies with her scheduled Facebook post. Hours after her body was discovered, this image was published to her page showing dresses hanging from a tree. It shocked many people and also led them to believe that this was another celebrity death hoax. However, it wasn't. This was very real, and strangely, the image that she had scheduled to upload was, given the circumstances, nothing short of unnerving. Dresses, huh? All this hard work. There exists a channel that goes by Human Being 15 that has only one upload to date. In this 9 minute video, you're met with what initially seems like a random, ordinary person rummaging through some old notebooks and storage. Things begin to take a strange turn when you realize what this channel is trying to convey. Let's see if you can spot what's off about this before we go any further. It's a school. Wait, what? My D Mr. Diddy? Oh. Uh, hold up. Yeah, I can't make it out. It's too blurry. Oh, there we go. Mr. Diddy, all, all his hard work I have for, for you. All this. A bunch of notebooks. As we just saw, at about two minutes into the video, the camera panned across a poster that says, Mr. Diddy, all this hard work I have done for you. The same thing actually happens at 3 minutes and 21 seconds. We then are shown hundreds upon hundreds of other notebooks that this person's got stockpiled in one of his rooms, and at about 6 minutes and 20 seconds in, we're finally shown what's in one of the books. What the hell? It's the phrases, Please, Mr. P. Diddy, please respond, and Brother Diddy, please accept, over and over and over. Human Being 15 then goes forth to show Damn. us more. Damn, so someone wrote all of this in every notebook. I'm taking it P. Diddy, Puff Daddy. They're like trying to get him to respond. Or oh. Over and over. Human Being 15 then goes forth to show us more of his stockpiled notebooks before the video ends. Allegedly, this video is a re-upload from their previous channel, namely titled Human Being 151. The creator would go by the name Insomniac and had over 1,000 videos showing this sort of behavior. His video titles ranged from things such as Diddy Dear Diddy Please Read This to Diddy TV Official. There were even oh, some that had song my ass. So something else? I don't know. Let me let it finish. I might ask the P. Diddy do it. As I don't know, Diddy, dear Diddy, please read this to Diddy TV official. 
There were even some that had song lyrics in the title, presumably to somehow gain his attention. Oh, it was. According to the site Cracked, which we mentioned earlier, whom, at the time, had access to his endless library of videos, the content on Human Being 151's channel started with insanity from the very first video and went downhill from there. While the original channel has long been deleted, at least we have this re-upload which tells us all that we really need to know about the kind of guy Human Being was. Obviously, this guy has an indivisible obsession with the hip-hop artist P. Diddy. Why him out of all people? I really couldn't tell you, but this guy clearly wanted to be noticed and went to extreme lengths to get his attention in the most disturbing manner possible. Man. And there you have it. That I, I was not expecting a story like that at the end. Or, well, I mean, you can definitely tell this was one of Nexpo early videos. His current videos that had me effed up in the head by the first 15 seconds of the first story. Like, you know, I got to get up out of here. But that freaking alien story definitely had me thinking, not going to lie to you. The last story, I was not expecting that. I'm like, there's no way this is going this direction. But it actually did, man. I couldn't I couldn't put anyone, a celebrity that high. I, I don't put myself that high in my life. I, I need to do so. But yeah, that I can never understand that type of video. That that type of clip, that type of situation, that person, I, I can't understand it. But either way it go, though, go ahead and get up out of here. Do me a favor real quick before you dip. Click that like button for me. I appreciate you. You definitely helped me out by putting me in the algorithm by doing so. Go ahead and enjoy your day, your morning, your evening, your night. You click it. Stop playing. Go ahead. No, you can't hit my shit. Go, man, click. Appreciate it. All right, enjoy your day. I'm